Hey guys, you asked me to make a math version to go with my science version, so here is what I think you need to do to get a grade 5 in maths. So, if you want to get a grade 5 in maths, what I think you really need to focus on is your core skills, because these are going to come up in so, so many different questions. It's not just going to be a simple question, like divide this by this, but also some of the more complicated questions. And what I mean by core skills is like your long division, your, your long multiplication, your rearranging equations in algebra. These are going to come up in so, so many places, in so, so many questions, obviously on the non-calculator paper. And on the calculator paper, we need to focus on how to use our calculator properly, because I can pretty much guarantee they're going to ask a question that looks simple, but basically is checking whether you can type numbers into your calculator properly. But this skill comes up in so many different places. This is, these skills are really important ones to focus on getting correct. Some of the questions, especially towards the end, are going to look really, really complicated and awful. Do not worry, okay? Do not worry if you look at a question and go, oh, that looks hideous. What I want you to do is to get your highlighters out, to get your different colour pens out, and try and break the question down into its simplest parts. So there's a trend having really, really wordy questions in maths papers. Just try and pick out the numbers, highlight the important numbers in your um, nice pretty colours, and don't get too caught up in what all the words are saying, focus on the numbers. Try and turn the wordy question into a maths question. Or try and look at something big and pick out the small parts. If you have like a big um, angles question, write down everything you know. Even if you've got a line that crosses another line, you know one angle, write down the other angle because it's 180 minus that angle. You don't know which bits of information are going to be important for finding the final answer. Sometimes starting at the end and working, um, trying to get the answer, isn't necessarily the most helpful thing to do. Sometimes you should just start in a random place, write down everything you know, see what you come up with, and then the pathway to the end might make itself a lot more obvious. Now, you, everyone's going to find different parts of the exams easy and different parts of the exam hard. Do not think you have to do the paper in order. Sit down, have a really quick flick through the paper. I'm talking like a minute tops. If you see a question on your favourite topic, that's question 13, do that question first. You, you don't have to do question one first. You know, if question one is a long division question and you're kind of like, oh my god, I just can't do that, and then you spend five minutes trying to get one mark from question one, that's not a good use of your time in exams. Whereas if you know question 13 is multiplying out brackets and you can do that really, really well, do that question first. You do not have to do the exam in order. But I would really, really, really like you to have a fantastic go at trying every single question. Even if you can't get the answer, you still might be able to get some of the works marks for working out. Um, in the mark scheme, it's really, really clearly laid out for the examiners which marks you get for this bit. And you don't just get all the marks for the answer, there's going to be working steps in there as well. So even if you only manage to do like the first part of expanding out the brackets, you still might get some marks for that. So it's really, really worth trying every single question that you can. And don't forget, you and the examiner are the only people that are going to see the exam paper. So if you try something and get it wrong, well, don't be embarrassed by that because you might be right. And the only other person that's going to see your exam paper is the examiner, who doesn't know who you are. So you've got nothing to be embarrassed about. And if you try something, you're convinced it's not the right answer, don't cross it out, just leave it. Unless you can come up with a better answer, just leave it on the paper. If you spend ages and ages and ages like blacking out your answer because you're too embarrassed and you don't want the examiner to see it, well, you might have got a mark in there somewhere. The examiner might just try and squeeze a mark in there for you. So try every single question, even if you don't think the answer is right, just leave it, unless you can come up with a better answer. Don't write two answers for one question, because the examiner won't know which one you think is right, and then you won't get any marks at all. So, unless you can come up with a better answer, 
um, try every single question. And if you have multiple choice questions and you're not sure, don't leave it, just guess. These are the, the easiest marks in the world, just guess. You've got a one in four chance of getting it right, so just guess. Okay guys, I am making loads and loads of videos, loads and loads of playlists to help you out. Go and check those out, go and practice with the exam papers, um, and good luck.